Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harriton, and if you are someone who experiences seasonal allergies, then this is a video I encourage you to watch in its entirety. I decided to film a video on seasonal allergies for two reasons. Number one, many people ask me about seasonal allergies because they want to spend more time outside. And number two, this is a topic that I have a lot of experience with. Seasonal allergies run in my family, and I am predisposed to having all the standard symptoms, including the sneezing, the runny nose, the itchy eyes, and a scratchy throat when pollen counts are high. Now, I'm filming this outside mid-spring in western Pennsylvania when the hickories, the walnuts, and the grasses are flowering. But I'm completely fine right now, and the reason that I'm fine is that I know how to tweak a few things in my life in order to reduce symptoms drastically to the point where I don't even have any symptoms. If I don't tweak a few things, the symptoms come back. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the action steps that I've taken in order to get rid of seasonal allergies. I'm only going to share with you what works for me though. Clearly, there are a lot of people who don't do any of the things that I mentioned in this video and they're completely fine. They don't have any seasonal allergies. And there are some people who have seasonal allergies who may not fully benefit from the action steps that I provide. But if you are interested in hearing how I, someone who is predisposed to having seasonal allergies, am able to reduce symptoms almost completely and spend a lot of time outside in peak allergy season symptom free, then please continue watching this video. So first, I'll let you know that I don't do what a lot of professionals recommend. I don't monitor pollen counts. I don't limit the amount of time I spend outdoors. I don't close my windows when I'm indoors and I don't take any over-the-counter medications. My strategy involves four main components, and no surprise, all four components have to do with diet. But here's the thing, when people ask me about seasonal allergies, they almost always ask me what can they take in order to combat seasonal allergies. To me, that's the wrong approach. Certainly there are things that we could take, and in a few minutes I'll discuss a few of these things, but I have found it much more advantageous over the years to address the underlying triggers that inflame the body. If you think about what's involved with seasonal allergies, there's a lot of inflammation. And if our bodies are already inflamed because of diet, then seasonal allergens like pollen and the inflammation that ensues because of the body's response to pollen can push some of us over the edge. So rather than focus on what I could take to combat seasonal allergies, I address the underlying triggers, not the superficial triggers like pollen, but the underlying triggers that I need to avoid so that my immune system and my inflammatory responses are optimized. One of the biggest triggers for me is gluten. Now, I do not have celiac disease. If I eat gluten, I'm okay, I can still function. But in peak allergy season, if I eat gluten, my allergies flare up. And even outside of peak allergy season, if I have some gluten, I tend to get symptoms that mimic seasonal allergies. Therefore, I do not eat gluten at all at any time during the year. And honestly, my life is so much better because of it. I don't miss it. I don't wish that gluten didn't do this to my body. I don't even think about it. I just know that gluten-containing products are not optimal for my body, and they can be a significant trigger for seasonal allergies. Now, there's not a lot of research on the topic, but some studies have noted a connection between gluten and allergy symptoms. This study mentions that a food allergy to wheat manifests with a variety of symptoms that include allergic rhinitis and allergic rhinitis is just a fancy term for allergies. Another study mentions that the association between celiac disease and allergic rhinitis is not fully explored, but is speculated due to shared pathophysiological mechanisms involved in the disease process. Now, many scientifically minded people do not like to acknowledge anything anecdotal, but when it comes to eliminating gluten for successfully treating seasonal allergies, plenty of anecdotal reports exist. Moving along, let's discuss dairy. Like gluten, dairy is a trigger for my seasonal allergies. Now, I'm not lactose intolerant. I don't have a serious dairy allergy. If I have some dairy, I'm okay. But if I'm not too careful, then dairy can worsen my seasonal allergies in peak allergy season. And even when pollen counts are low, if I consume dairy, I get symptoms that mimic seasonal allergies. For me, most dairy tends to be mucus forming and I tend to get congested when I consume it. But butter and ghee are okay. I'm fine if I consume those two products. But milk, even raw milk, cheese, yogurt, these are products that are not optimal for my body. Interestingly though, some people do find benefit in their seasonal allergies after consuming raw milk 
but that's never been the case for me. So let's stop right there. Wheat and dairy, these are two triggers for my seasonal allergies, and I know they are triggers for a lot of people. But the other common food allergens, like fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, and soy, these don't seem to have any effect on my seasonal allergies. But if I had to generalize advice, I'd say start with the common food allergens and see if there's any association between their consumption and your seasonal allergies. Again, if we remove the underlying triggers that are leading to seasonal allergies, we'll be getting to the root cause rather than just treating symptoms. Speaking of underlying triggers, let's talk about foods that are high in histamines. So you're probably familiar with histamines in the context of allergies because many over-the-counter allergy medicines are antihistamines. Well, histamines are chemicals that the body produces in response to allergens, and histamines are responsible for all those standard allergy symptoms, including the runny nose, the itchy eyes, and the scratchy throat. Well, it turns out that some foods are naturally high in histamines, and a nutritionist by the name of Chris Masterjohn turned me on to this idea many years ago that if we eliminate some of these high histamine-containing foods, we can radically improve our seasonal allergies. Now, if you take a look at a list of which foods are naturally high in histamines, you'll probably fall off your chair because there are a lot of foods on the list and eliminating all these foods might seem impossible. But I've found that focusing on the highest histamine containing foods and eliminating them is all that I really need to do. And I don't have to worry too much about everything else on the list. It turns out that fermented foods can be exceptionally high in histamines. Several years ago, I was consuming a lot of homemade sauerkraut and my seasonal allergies were particularly bad. I didn't know why they were bad at the time, but fortunately I came across information posted by Chris Masterjohn in which he mentioned that fermented foods can worsen allergy symptoms. So I stopped consuming the sauerkraut right around peak allergy season and my allergies basically disappeared completely. So the first three points of my strategy, gluten, dairy, high histamine containing foods, are triggers that I need to be very mindful of if I want to control my allergies. There is another part of my strategy that involves consuming something rather than eliminating something. And that something would be stinging nettle. I am a huge fan of stinging nettle. I've posted a few videos regarding the benefits of stinging nettle consumption. And one of the reasons I really enjoy consuming stinging nettle is that it successfully treats my seasonal allergies. This has been documented in the scientific literature. Clinical evidence shows that freeze-dried extracts of nettle reduce allergy symptoms. This particular study also mentions that a stinging nettle leaf extract has broad in vitro anti-inflammatory activities that address multiple steps in the pro-inflammatory cascade associated with inflammatory disorders, including allergic rhinitis. I drink one or two cups of a stinging nettle infusion every day during peak allergy season, and I also add a small amount of local raw honey to each cup. Some studies do suggest that raw local honey can alleviate symptoms associated with seasonal allergies. Now certainly there are a few more things that can be effective for treating seasonal allergies, including spirulina and also butter burr. I haven't tested those two, but research suggests that they can be quite effective. So my four part strategy for dealing with seasonal allergies includes eliminating gluten completely, eliminating most dairy, removing most fermented products like sauerkraut, but being mindful of other high histamine containing foods, and drinking stinging nettle infusions with raw local honey. When I implement all four parts of this strategy, my seasonal allergies are essentially non-existent. And remember, I am someone who, probably due to genetic factors, is predisposed to experiencing seasonal allergies but I've been able to gain significant control over this condition through diet and lifestyle changes. As I said before, you may be someone who does none of the things that I mentioned in this video and you don't have to worry about allergies. More power to you. Or you may be someone who has allergies, you try some of the things in this video and you find out that they don't really work for you. That's okay too. I strongly believe, however, that you can improve your symptoms at least somewhat by making changes to your diet and to your lifestyle, but it is really up to you to figure out what those changes look like. I can't do it for you without knowing who you are, but hopefully I provided some inspiration and some motivation to encourage you to not give up hope. You have more power and more control over the situation than you think, but you have to be disciplined, you have to be willing, and you have to be consistent. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. Hope you learned something. If you are not subscribed to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel, I encourage you to do that. You can also head on over to learnyourland.com and sign up for the email newsletter. And if you're on social media, on Facebook or Instagram, feel free to give Learn Your Land a follow over there. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next video.